Pour le ministère, Dr. Saman Kalegama, friends, ladies and gentlemen. This conference on taxation is really not the run of the mill kind of taxation conference dealing with issues of taxation principles or problems of taxation. Planning to examine the relationships between taxation on the one hand and governance and development on the other, I would describe this a conference in some aspects of political economy of taxation. That these relationships are real is perhaps intuitively known, but not examined in adequate detail. Today and tomorrow, I hope the different dimensions of the link, links among taxation, governance and development will be examined by scholars and practitioners so that the participants of the conference will gain practical benefits. The government of any country needs revenues for all variety of, activity, of its activities. There is indeed uh, no source of revenue to a government as secure and reliable and also as under its own control as taxation revenue, of course, if properly planned and well implemented. In many countries in the world, particularly among the developing countries, questions of state capacity are being raised implying that the planning and implementation capacity is not available with the state structures to carry out the many things which a government wishes and plans to do for the benefit of its people. The field of taxation comes under scrutiny whenever state capacity comes under discussion. The ability of government to raise high volumes of tax revenue is seen as a reflection of a high level of state capacity. From a different angle, the chosen sources of taxation and the manner of collection of those tax revenues are seen as indicative of the degree of a government's accountability to its people. The importance of taxation has come to be highlighted in Sri Lanka in its present context from a number of different political economy angles. Sri Lanka today stands on a significant crossroads. The end to 30 years of violent conflict have given rise to an era of development which offers valuable opportunities, of course, together with uh, important threats to achieve rapid as well as inclusive development. Within the public-private partnership that is being envisaged in order to make use of these opportunities while addressing the threats, the government's role is critical, or is seen as critical, multifarious and large. This raises the need for buoyant revenues as non-tax sources of revenue under the control of the government of Sri Lanka are not that significant. The need for increased revenues must be addressed largely through taxation. But since the beginning of the 1990s in Sri Lanka, tax revenue to GDP ratio was on a declining path, starting uh, increasing beginning only last year. So significant reforms in tax policy and tax administration are needed if the government were to effectively play its developmental role as envisaged today. The need for vibrant tax revenues can be highlighted from a number of other angles as well. An important one among these other angles in the country's present 
lower middle income position in the listing of countries of the world by income levels. This has made Sri Lanka today ineligible for concessional capital flows to the same extent as was the case a decade or so ago, raising the required revenues as much as possible through taxation without unduly affecting private sector initiatives is clearly very desirable as it would minimize the need for commercial borrowing. I hope valuable insights will be provided in the dialogues ahead about how to address these and other complex political economic issues of taxation. Towards increasing tax revenues, Sri Lanka has already undertaken positive steps. For instance, the appointment of a presidential commission of taxation and implementing its recommended reforms, though in a piecemeal fashion since Budget 2011, presented last November. Many more reforms are, of course, needed. It is, further, it is to further the dialogue and debate on these and other issues related to taxation, state capacity and socio-economic development that the Institute of Policy Studies of Sri Lanka has, together with the International Center for Tax and Development in Sussex, organized this international conference on taxation under the theme, pulling ourselves up, taxation, state building, and away from aid on these two days. <coughs> Seminars and discussions on taxation matters are ubiquitous in Colombia, particularly in the pre- and post-budget periods every year. The key value addition of this conference will be that the Sri Lankan audience will gain exposure to the latest thinking on political economy issues of taxation from tax practitioners and scholars from a number of other countries. Plus, many contributors from Sri Lanka and particularly from a few developing countries which Sri Lanka can relate to. Uniquely, some of the international resource persons for this conference are drawn from African countries, including Alan Kagina, Director General of the Uganda Revenue Authority, Aidan Keenly, Director International Relations of South Africa Revenue Service and Dr. Atiya Waris, Vice Chairperson of the Tax Justification Network Africa. I seek your apology if I pronounce the names incorrectly. Uh, these uh, taxation authorities from Africa will help us explore the recent African successes in taxation and tax administration, hopefully guiding the members of the audience about options and strategies for greater domestic revenue mobilization in Sri Lanka in the context of the country needing to move away from dependency on foreign aid. Coming on to the role assigned to me this morning, let me begin by welcoming our chief guest in this inaugural ceremony. Honorable Dr. Sarat Tamunugama, Senior Minister for International Monetary Cooperation, and our guest of honor, Honorable D. W. Gunasekara, uh, Senior Minister for Human Resources. Uh, thank you, sirs, for accepting our invitation to participate and to make a contribution to the conference through your words of wisdom. I should mention the valuable assistance the IP has received from the International Center for Tax and Development, ICPD, of the Institute of Development Studies of the University of Sussex. In organizing this conference in Colombo, and let me welcome here among our meets, my old friend, Professor Mick Moore, as contributor and participant in the conference. Together with Mick Moore, on behalf of the IPAs, I warmly welcome all our foreign resource persons from Africa and if there are any others from other countries. 
all the other speakers and panelists in the conference are also warmly welcome. The participants in the conference include officials from the England Revenue Department, tax experts, economists, researchers, private sector professionals and leaders of chambers of commerce, government officials, journalists, representatives from relevant civil society organizations. I welcome all of you and hope you will gain significantly from participation. In the absence of a separate vote of thanks in the agenda this morning, let me say a few words also by way of thanks. In order to ensure greater stakeholder involvement, we were keen to partner with key organizations in the taxation arena within the government and those organizations of interest in matters of taxation among training establishments and within the private sector. So I wish to thank our institutional partners in this endeavor, the Inland Revenue Department, Sri Lanka Institute of Taxation, and the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka. It will be amiss on my part if I do not end my uh, welcome address without gracefully acknowledging the hard work contributed by Mr. Anushka Singer on behalf of the IPS in planning and organizing this conference. Thank you very much.